I first heard about Larsson from a friend who had just been to Denmark. I couldn't believe that such a person existed, and I took the first plane to Copenhagen, hoping to find him. It wasn't hard. I was expecting a blonde eccentric, someone really on the edge. The reality far outstripped my imagination. I wish you all the, all the best of luck mm. uh, in, in your further cooperation with Mr. Kulgai. Uh, we don't like it here, and no. I'm told he's the first Dane ever to, to do it. I am Brian Kukher Larsen. I am 43 years old. I am applying for asylum in the Czech Republic on ecological grounds. I love you. You said the sacrifice was easy. But I am no martyr. I have no cause. I have been stuck out You can get out here. Good. Did you know that Denmark has the highest depression rate in Europe? Yeah, I did actually. Wow. That is beautiful. Exactly. Who can live like this? My very first memory is um, after my mother gave me the light of life was of dark, dark smog-covered sky, very dramatic. And uh, then a whisper of air, small fart from the Nordic fjords, cleared it. I'm sorry, I have only one cup, but oh, there is the other cup. Kukai's story was simple. He'd been a coal shoveler all his life, but had lost his job when his country modernized its power industry, and he was possibly about to lose his home. His solutions to his problems, though, weren't simple. So you've lived here all your life? You must have some interesting memories? Yes, yes. Yes, yes I, I was born here. Not in this house, but just down the road, on the coal tip. My mother wanted to finish her shift. She was dedicated. You know, when you are a child, you, uh, you think, what am I going to be? What is life going to do to me? Always you are wondering who you will be. When my father gave me a shovel, I knew who I was. Brian Krukesh Larsen. This is my shovel. Why did you choose to appeal to the Czech Republic? It was like a sign. I won a trip, a holiday to the Czech Republic five years ago. I went there for a skiing holiday and I looked around and I thought, I could live here. I liked the way things were. So that's why I decided to apply. A lot of Danes we talk to think uh, don't agree with what you're doing. Huh? Some of them have said that you're foolish. What do you feel? About, how do you feel about that? Yes. Well, the problem today is the echo people running the place, who are in the majority, used to be in the minority. And at that time, I used to say, "Okay, that's fine. I can respect that. If they want to protest, I don't mind." But now, they are in the majority. And people like me are in the minority. And democracy is all about how you treat your minorities. But I am like a hunted deer, a, a scared mole who is afraid for his life. Where are you going? I'm going to show you where they want me to live. I got a letter from the council six months ago. Uh -huh. They want me to live here. 
That doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. No. Why don't you go inside and take a look? I guess so. Why not? Velux has uh, met Mr. Larsen a couple of times, and we have uh, been trying to help him to get uh, a better place to live. It's a very uh, flexible, very uh, energy efficient, and very uh, comfortable uh, house to right. live in. Right. Uh, but it seems to me that Mr. Larsen has other priorities in his life. He's mm -hmm. more seeking into the dark holes of, mm. of his yeah. past, I think. Yeah. This is a good place to come and think, collect your thoughts. All my memories are buried in this pile. The sound of work, the smell of my father coming home from work. And they just sent me a letter saying they want to knock it down and move me. What about my memories? What about my life? What about my parents? Their ashes are scattered in there. So, welcome to the inside of this building. Um, this is uh, what we consider a really, really pleasant building. I wish everybody could live in a pleasant place like this. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what you notice is a really, really nice daylight. There's a lots of daylight inside. We have the light from the south and the light from the, from the north. The first I knew, I got a letter saying my home's a health hazard. Too dark, too dirty. What's everyone got against darkness? Man's greatest invention is the curtain. The electric light's pretty good, but remember, Edison invented the switch with it. He knew what he was doing. So this is uh, this is the exterior of the roof. Uh -huh. uh, you can see the panels. Okay. Black, uh, bluish areas there, those are photovoltaic uh -huh. uh, panels which uh -huh. convert solar energy into electricity. Mm -hmm. This is exchange to the electricity grid. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we sell it, sometimes we buy it. When I was a child, I would wake up in the morning and smell the air and think, today they're burning coal from Armenia. Russia, Czech. It was like a magic carpet ride. A sooty and a magic carpet. The children today, they don't understand that. What's this place? This is a power plant, 250 gigawatts. Enough to power the whole district. And they use the heat it produces to provide district heating and hot water. That's got to be good, eh? I haven't got what's wrong with that. Wait, 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 what's going on? Wait. Good guy, wait. I don't get it. Smell that air! I smell it! You're... There is no smell! There is no smoke! The whole fucking thing has been cleaned up! Of the time he's just standing there. Sometimes my colleagues uh, may pretend to listen, but most of the time he's just ignored. What do you think about his actions like that? What do you, I mean, what, how, how does the company feel about this? The joke is over. Uh -huh. uh, he should wake up, realize uh -huh. he is in the 21st century, right. and he could find better causes to protest against. Right. So what's going on here? In here, yeah. the waste for incineration is delivered. Uh -huh. Uh, it's important to remember that in Denmark we recycle most of the waste. Uh -huh. But 25% of all waste is incinerated, and that's what we do here. And Mr. Larsen, was, is he involved in what, what ways? Yeah. 
he getting up? What's he doing here? He, he may try to sabotage our right. process, sneaking in uh, a little glass or a little metal. But uh, we are too clever for that, and um, well, he keeps us on our toes. Right. And I'm just watching it being dumped there. Mm -hmm. So he's dumped in here, and then where do you incinerate it? Well, the cranes, uh, you see it, yeah. uh, will take the waste, yeah. and behind the grey wall in the yeah. back yeah. are the furnace lines where the incineration takes place. They burn waste. They've gone carbon neutral. And I don't understand. What was your problem with carbon neutral? <laughs> well, carbon neutral means that they leave the coal in the ground to rot. They don't use it. It's a waste. You know, uh, this one is a, a waste management company. Okay. And among many other things, we run this uh, waste to energy plant. And this is the control room. Okay. And so here you can see everything. From here, all activities are controlled in the incineration process. So the, the, the guy there is doing the cranes? No, not the cranes, but uh, the environmental measurements and the energy production and uh, stuff like that. They burn 65 tons of waste an hour here. Imagine what you could do with that much waste. It could be magnificent. A big pile in a field somewhere. We could finally get a mountain for skiing here, like the Arabs have. Here you look into the actual incineration. In there, there's a thousand degrees hot. Yeah? It doesn't, it doesn't really look that much. It is. Yeah. So, we, behind in, in, that wall. In, in, in behind here, we uh -huh. produce 250 gigawatts of electrical power and more than 1,000 gigawatts of district heating each year. What about uh, the, uh, the, waste, the waste gases? Yeah, the, the smoke is yeah, cleaned, of course. Because yes. Pulkai was complaining about it. He said, yeah, he said it's cleaned. It is cleaned. Yeah. And we are at all times, of course, following every regulation environmentally. Okay, so um, how, I mean, what, what do you take out of it? I'm curious. Uh, assets and heavy metals and other pollutants. Uh -huh. Right. And I'm still not quite clear why he's against this place. Well, incinerating waste is a very CO2-friendly alternative to fossil fuels like natural gas, oil and coal. In order to appreciate beauty, you have to have something to compare it to. Okay. Huh? Yeah. What they don't realize when they take away the dirt yeah. Is that taking away our chance to appreciate beauty? Huh? Think about that. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. As we gain something, we lose something. Was this Kierkegaard for the 21st century? Was Kulkaya actually presenting a philosophy of grime? I wasn't sure, but I wanted to know more. So, you've shown us the house, we know about the application, and we've seen your protest. My question now has to be, why? I wanted to work in the car industry, but they moved everything to China. So I asked for a nice power plant, and they offered me a wind farm. What do you think about global warming? Heard of global warming? Oh, yes, of course I've heard of it. I'm not some dumb idiot sitting in a dump. So there it was. Asked a direct question, Kulkai was unable to answer. Was this a case of Jung's orphan archetype, or just the ignorance of a hunted deer? And what of the man's deeper psyche? I wished to press further, but Kulkai refused to be drawn. Monster, poet, scared mole. I was no closer to knowing, and our time was up. Little did I know that Kuka had more to tell, and before we left, he planned to show me the heart of soot. So this is my father and mother. Mm -hmm. They did not always dress this well. This mm -hmm. is a special day. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the mine canteen with my mother, her sister, and her cousin. Mm -hmm. This is the way things used to be. See, they are swimming in white bathing costumes. Mm. Huh? And where is that? Uh, that is the Baltic. Uh -huh. It used to be a different color. Mm. 
And this is my family going to work. My mother, my father. They dressed very well. Yes, they did dress well for work. Mm. My all, father's brother. All of this is your family? Uh, all my family. Mm. Uh, yes, my whole family shoveled coal. My father shoveled coal. My father's father. My mother, my mother's mother. My great-grandfather shoveled coal. To ask me to stop would be to ask the Japanese to stop whaling or the American Indian to stop hunting buffalo or things like that. I can't give it up. Did I see a tear in his eyes? he said those words. Denmark was using less coal as a power source, and that was a good thing for its people and its environment. But though some mysteries surrounding Kulkai were no clearer, I thought I was starting to understand his sooty heart. He was a man born for harder and dirtier times, not the polite and clean 21st century, and I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. Hi, Kulkai! Dear Mr. Larson, yours is the first request of its kind we have had and we would be happy to accept it. Denmark is a world leader in ecology and alternative energy. We hope to tackle our problems in the same way that your country has done and we are sure you can advise us on our own ecological projects. The country in north of Bohemia where you had such a great holiday is itself one of the centers of renewal. I'm sure that the region would welcome consultations with you, as well as the chance to make use of your experience with wind turbines. We wish you the best of luck and look forward to meeting you. And there it was. He'd been accepted by Czech, but to do a job he loathed. He hadn't found understanding here either. Hello? Attached to the letter was a short note to us. Gone away. But where? I remembered his scratchy voice in the evening of our second night as he oh. told me mysteriously, I've seen amounts of coal you people wouldn't believe in. Sorry, Dalai Lama. Zhong Ying de Zhong Chao Ken Min Gong Ke gua de ren min man. Yo Brian Kulke Larsen. Ohayo gozaimasu!